Okay. Sorry, we just saw a sneak peek. How's that? Perfect. Okay, welcome tonight. Thank you so much for those of you that were able to take the time and just come and spend a few minutes with us. I hope that you'll walk away with some really practical, lovely tools to help you balance um, your mind, your body, and your soul. These are things that are the things that I use on a daily basis and that um, I've been using that. And the things that Rajmi are going to teach for things that I um, I'm so grateful for and I use on a daily basis. In fact, she's such a good teacher that it's, as we were prepping for this tonight, um, she said, just give me a few minutes, I'm going to meditate. And I was like, of course, we're going to meditate. Like, yes, we needed to sit down and just gather ourselves before. So hopefully you'll feel that good energy that we've been prepping for all day. So for those of you who don't know me, um, my name is Shelly Swap. I am um, an integrative herbalist and functional nutritionist. So I graduated from the East West School of Planetary Herbology um, that's a three-year full-time program. And then I was able to spend some time in China studying at the Longhua Hospital of Traditional Chinese Medicine, which changed my life. Like every single one of these things that I've been able to do has changed my life because I saw how um, advanced um, Western medicine protocols and traditional Chinese medicine protocols and nutrition were merged together in this beautiful way in acute care. Um, and I left China just so heartbroken that I couldn't bring that home with us. Um, but that has been my goal is to be able to continue to find ways to offer um, the best of everything that I can to my clients from all the different um, pathways. So I've also graduated from the New Medicine um, Institute for Women with Dr. Aviva Ram. And um, that's where I added my integrative medicine piece. And then I'm currently um, in process of getting my human clinical nutrition integrative medicine um, a master's at the Maryland University of Integrative Health. So that's my little background for those of you who don't know me. If you're wondering if I'm just one of those gals who started signing up with an MLM and, and got my education there, I no offense to anyone who does, but this is, this is where I come from and why I love this work so much. You'll see that I've been invested in this sort of education for a long time. Um, I didn't start out to become an herbalist. I actually started out to become an astrophysicist um, of all the crazy things in life, went to college to study physics and math and um, ended up graduating in a totally different arena. And then, you know, grew up, got married, had babies and my world came to a crashing halt when several of them were diagnosed with some pretty tough diagnosis. Um, this is not a current picture of them. They would die if I posted a current, current picture of them. <laughs> they all really value their privacy. And this was several years ago. But um, when they were really young, we were given some catastrophic diagnosis for one of them. And then others were struggling with all, all sorts of other things that the doctors just kept saying. We tried all the meds for ADHD and anxiety and there were autism diagnosis. And um, we pretty much exhausted everything that was traditional. And I got to my rock bottom and just said, I cannot imagine that, you know, the universe gave me these beautiful children so I could just watch them suffer. Um, and I, there had to be more. And, and gratefully, that yearning, that asking, that searching opened lots of doors. And that's how I discovered the world of, I didn't discover it. It was, it was brought to me, <laughs> the world of nutrition and from there into herbalism. Um, and hopefully I'll be able to tell you more of my story at another time when it's more appropriate. But um, as I began to see how nutrition and herbs changed my children's lives so dramatically, um, I could not stop learning, which is why you see that entire list of, of places that I've continued to study and will probably continue to study for the rest of my life. I, one of my first teachers um, told me, he said, never call yourself a master herbalist. That's how I know that you are not actually an herbalist because once you begin to study this beautiful work, you'll recognize you'll never ever be able to master it. Um, and so um, this is why we're gonna talk about just one herb tonight. Um, Stavel Brooks, Brooks um, an old herbalist who helped train many of, the, of my contemporary teachers, he often said that my idea of a good herbalist isn't one who knows the uses of 40 different herbs, but someone who knows how to use one herb in 40 different ways. ways. Um, so we're gonna talk about lemon balm tonight. Um, lemon balm is known as the happiness herb. It is, um, when I was first introduced to it, that's how it was taught to me. Like, this is the happiness, this is the happiness herb. This is an herb that will both calm and will uplift. Um, it has been used for over 2,000 years. We have records of it being used in Greece. Um, we have it being used in 
um, Egypt, we have it being used in Rome, we have it being used in, in all sorts of countries all over the world for all sorts of different things. Um, people swore that, I think it was Periclesis who said that this herb would bring longevity and everlasting health. So it's been revered for a very, very long time. Um, okay, so just a couple of the um, qualities. These are the top nine qualities that are attributed to lemon balm. It's considered a nervine. That means that it helps to calm the nervous system and helps to regulate the nervous system. Um, it's a mild sedative. And I say mild because it's not one that you have to worry about using and then you, know, you can't get behind the wheel of a car um, or worry about heavy equipment or anything like that. It's just mildly calming. Um, it's also mildly antidepressant. It's not something that's gonna force um, it's going to shift you into a different space. It's going to force you to be happy when you're sad, but it really does lift the spirits. Um, and it's also considered a mild antispasmodic, which is kind of a fun combination when you think about it. Um, you know, it, it soothes, it calms the nerves, it calms the system, but it also calms muscle spasms. And it's particularly um, helpful in those muscle spasms that we attribute to colic um, and gastrointestinal types of things. It's great for IB issues. Um, it's great for stomach cramping, those types of things. And then because of that, it's considered a carminative, which means that it helps with digestion, um, helps to calm rumbly tummies, and it helps to improve um, gassiness and bloating and all those fun things that we never like to experience. And, and it's considered a diaphoretic. Now, it's a specific type of diaphoretic. A diaphoretic is something that opens up the pores and allows and perspiration and allows heat out. So it's something that we'll use when someone is struggling with overheating and they just can't sweat and they can't, maybe they have a fever. And, and one of the ways that we help someone who has a fever is to open up the pores and allow the body to cool itself down. Um, but the way that this herb does it is it relaxes the pores. So we have some herbs that are gonna, that are gonna be exciting and uplifting and they're gonna be stimulating and that's how they induce perspiration. But lemon balm does just the opposite. It relaxes and open up, opens up those pores. So it's wonderful for cold and flu and influenza and those types of things where your body is already super agitated and heating up and it helps to calm you down and cool you down that way. Um, it's antiviral, which I'm gonna talk a little bit more about in a, in a few minutes. It's full of, of fabulous antioxidants which then lends itself to all sorts of things like anti-cancer properties and beneficial for brain health. And then it's also a vasodilator, um, which is wonderful if you tend to suffer from headaches um, that are from circulation that is, that is constricted. And we use it also in um, helping the legs. So people who are struggling with poor circulation in their legs, this is one of the herbs that I reach for. So yes, when we talk about one herb that can do 40 different things, this is what, this is what he was talking about. Um, so I think I've mentioned it before that this herb is both calming and uplifting. Um, so it's, it's one that isn't just gonna bum you out, sorry for the, the technical language there, um, but it is, it is one that is going to just help the spirits to be uplifted. And we, we, it does that through many of the things that we talked about a few minutes ago. Um, it does that through helping to improve digestion. It helps to calm muscle spasms. It helps to nourish the nervous system. Um, and there's so many different beneficial um, nutrients and antioxidants in it, but it actually does go in and help to repair a lot of that kind of fried feeling that you get when you've been overstimulated and we tend to run through, rapidly run through um, those nutrients and minerals that we need when we are stressed out. Um, it's also considered antiviral. And this is the one of the things that's so fun about, maybe fun is the wrong word, but um, I find it to be incredibly just, just humbling um, that so many herbs have capacity to help us fight some of these viruses that are endemic among our population. So there was a study that was done in Germany um, and it's been many years ago, but it's a really well quality, really high quality study. And they took a really strong extract of lemon balm, so a 71, so 70%, 70 to 1 ratio is a pretty strong ratio of lemon balm to water or to whatever the extract, I think they used it, an alcohol extract. And then they put it into a cream and they used lemon, I believe they used some, some lemon um, extract as well. And they made a 1% cream and then they had people who had herpes outbreaks apply it to the sores. To the spot. And then they also had a control group that got 
um, they didn't get, they just got a, um, a placebo. Um, and the, the group that had the lemon balm extract, they saw an almost complete reverse of symptoms in five days. They, they saw those sores can almost completely disappear in five days, whereas the um, control group didn't see any improvement at all with their placebo. Um, and so because of that, it's been studied for Epstein-Barr virus. Um, it's been studied for, um, it, we use it internally as well for people who have lung, who, who struggle with herpes. So I have them take it on a regular basis to help keep it in check. Um, but there are lots of lots and lots of uses that we're finding for this phenomenal herb. And I love to kind of make that connection for people that when we see something that calms, that uplifts, that acts as an antidepressant, and it also has antiviral activities, that tells us that depression is a lot more than we want to think about. Um, that there are often things that are really tugging on our body that are, that are causing a heavy load um, that can lead to, to depression. And so we want to be reaching for things that are going to be touching all these different touch points, these different bases and covering them to help us to find ways to um, help our clients, to help our family members and help ourselves be able to better, better manage and to stay healthier. So um, I always get asked this. So what is a dose? How much, how much should I take? Um, traditionally, lemon balm is taken as a tea. Um, because it is so delightful. It is so easy to give to children, to adults, to the elderly, and it's safe. It's safe for pregnancy. It's safe for um, nursing, breastfeeding moms. It's, it's safe for children of all ages. And it's one that has a really, really high safety profile. And so I generally recommend that you start with about one to two teaspoons per cup um, if you're making a nice, strong therapeutic tea. I like to use about a full heaping tablespoon in two cups of water um, as a base for my teas. And if I'm gonna make something that, that I really want to have that stronger benefit because I'm gonna make um, some of the recipes I'll, I'll share with you in just a moment, then I go even stronger. I'll do like a half a cup in two cups of, of water to make a really strong extract. Um, but you can also take lemon balm as um, a tincture. You can take it as a glycerite, which is fabulous for kids. Um, so, and then we just have drop doses. And so you're gonna take, you're gonna just, you're gonna start with a really low dose with a child. That would be maybe eight to 10 drops if you're talking someone under the age of 12. When you get to someone who's more adult size or three quarters of adult size and then and upwards, then we're gonna go up to like 10 to 20 to 30 and as far as 75 drops. And again, it's got a super high safety profile. So um, we're not worried about overdosing. The only thing that you may see is that someone get, may get a little more sleepy than you wanted them to. Any questions around that? Okay. <laughs> oh, Jenna, I'm sorry. Yes, this bomb is available for purchase. Um, I will include a link in the replay so that I can show you some of my favorite bombs. Thank you for asking that. Um, yes, for sure, Gemma, we'll make sure that you get the replay from the beginning. Um, thank you so much for joining. Okay, so this is one of the recipes, and I don't expect you to make it, um, but this is one that you can make, which I think you'll love to know about if you ever, oops, sorry, get um, in a situation where you're able to. There is a recipe called Carmelite water, and it was made by the Carmelite nuns. Um, it's been made for about 2,000 years, and this is one that was made for nausea, made for stomach griping, and they give it to babies who suffered from colic. Um, and we actually have some studies around that as well that showed that, that they, they saw a 50% decrease in um, colic symptoms among those who were, um, who were given this Carmelite water. And so to make it, you would make an extract, you would make a, a tincture, we would, we would put it in um, this combination of, of lemon balm and then they'll add angelica and coriander and lemon peel and nutmeg. And these are all things that have really high amounts of antioxidants. And you'll put it in 80, 80 proof brandy. This is how it was made. Originally, you let it sit in a cool, dark place covered for about four to six weeks. You're going to strain the herbs out and then you would add a sweetener. Yeah, generally, we would use honey. You could use, um, you could use sugar if you wanted to. Um, and you'll want to warm that honey up a little bit before so that it'll, so it'll blend completely. And then you're just going to put it on the shelf and use it just as the drop dose as we talked about before. This is a little bit higher drop dose. So this is 35 to 75. Or you can take it in a shot glass, which is my kid's favorite way to take anything. Um, is to put things in little teacups or little shot glasses. Um, and most people would, would take it right before a meal and it would help with digestion and help improve all those wonderful things that, 
that, that we've talked about with lemon balm. So this is just a fun one. And it runs about $18 to $20 for just an ounce of this. You can still buy Carmelite water um, from Amazon and stuff, but, but just so you know that you can make these types of fun things as well. And then I also wanted to introduce you to the spiritual piece of lemon balm. So the spiritual practices around lemon balm, not religious per se, but, but the spiritual practices, this was an herb that was considered sacred. Um, it was always grown around um, the goddess Diana's temple because it was so revered for its capacity to help calm the nervous system and, and soothe the system so that you could be a better beneficiary and a better giver of love. Um, and, and then it was also used regularly among those who were preparing for st students that were preparing, preparing for tests and those that were preparing for ritual work because it helped so much to calm and center the mind so they could be more present during these things. And so what I've included for you is what I call moon milk. If you've ever heard of moon milk, um, it's a milk that you would take before bedtime to help calm your nervous system, to help if you're struggling to sleep through the night. Um, you'll, you'll see there's a golden, there's, this is kind of similar to golden milk. Um, but the way that I prepare this is you would use one to two tea bags of lemon balm tea. So if you're using tea bags, you just take two of them because that's going to give us a thicker, a, a more therapeutic dose. You're going to make a really strong concentrated tea. You're going to add, um, or you're going to use a, a full tablespoon of lemon balm in that cup of, a cup of hot water. You're going to cover it and steep it for about five to 10 minutes and um, just let the water absorb all of that lemon balm. Um, you're going to strain or pull out the the tea bags and then add a quarter cup of full fat coconut milk. We want the full fat here. Um, you're gonna add a little bit of nutmeg, a little bit of cinnamon, and then you can sweeten with monk fruit or honey or whatever you choose to sweeten it with. And then I want you to sit and just enjoy it um, and see if it helps to um, calm your nervous system and allow you to better settle into a good night's sleep. You can always add ginger, you can add um, ashwagandha, any of the other herbs that you might be familiar with you would take in the evening. These are wonderful to blend in with this as well. Um, let's see. Oh, great question. So um, a lot of people ask, oh, is the, is the essential oil going to do the same thing as the, the herb? And the answer is no, um, because what we're talking about is all of the benefits that you're going to get from the plant. So the antioxidants, the nutrients, the fiber, they all work together to provide these types of benefits. Whereas with the essential oil, which is still fabulous um, and is used in aromatherapy all the time, you're not going to get all of those benefits. It's gonna be used differently. In fact, I believe it's a lot more uplifting and you're not gonna get the same carminative effects. Um, you're not gonna get the stomach easing. So I, I don't recommend that you take this, this is an internal um, essential oil. Um, I would rather you use the tea because you're gonna get a lot more benefits at this time. So, um, awesome. Okay, any questions? I feel like I ran through that pretty quickly. Hopefully that worked well. Um, but this is when, as you are preparing to maybe create a mindfulness practice in your world, um, I would highly recommend that you make this part of your routine because it's a very simple way to help get your system to settle down. Yes, better sleep. Um, better concentration. Like I've been using it all day as I've been preparing for certain for this and for another presentation that I have tomorrow, because it really does help me to settle down and focus um, in ways that aren't set it like they aren't seriously sedative. It doesn't make me feel like oh I'm, I'm just like dragging my way through the day. So I hope you'll give this one a try. Um, and and with that I'm going to turn the time over to Dr. Rajmi because I think this is a great transition to help you <clears throat> to move into the, the mindfulness piece of our presentation tonight. Okay. Oh, Rajmi, I think you're muted. Let's see if we can. That was so good. Okay, I was muted. <laughs> I just told you guys the secrets of the universe while I was muted. I'm sorry you missed it, but that's okay. Next time. <laughs> can you guys see my screen though? All right, cool. Awesome. Okay. So, oh, I am so grateful you all are here. I just a tiny bit about me. A lot of you know me, but just in case you don't know me, um, Shelly and I, I mean, we just hit it off so well. We met 
a little maybe less than a year ago, but we've spent a lot of time together and uh, have realized how amazing that combination of nutrition, herbs, mindfulness, and meditation are. And so just a little bit about me is I'm a board certified family physician. I have been practicing for a little over 21 years. I'm also a national board certified um, integrative health coach. I'm also certified to teach several different kinds of meditation. And I'm the founder of Optimal Wellness. And this is uh, a program where we do one-on-one -on -one coaching as well as group coaching. And it's one of my absolute favorite things. I run retreats here in Florida, um, in-person retreats. I also speak as well. And so it's been a really phenomenal uh, time for sure, just to be alive, really. So um, a little bit about what we're going to talk about, right? So Shelly did an amazing job of, um, of giving us this really deep dive into this beautiful, gorgeous herb, um, lemon balm. I didn't know really so much of that. And I just find that to be so fascinating. So I want to give you kind of a little bit of an overview about meditation and mindfulness, because what I've found is there can be a lot of um, misconceptions. It can be a lot of ideas about meditation that we can kind of bring in with us. Um, uh, or people will say, I can't control my mind. I can't control my thoughts. I don't know how to meditate, all those things. But you're going to see how incredibly simple and accessible meditation and mindfulness are. So we're going to talk about both of those things. We're going to talk about balance, right? So what was so beautiful about Lemon Bomb is it really brings us more balance, right? And that's what we're looking for in our lives. And so we're, we're really delve into how how meditation can help us get into more balance. And of course, like I said, we're going to meditate together. And then I want you to be sure and hang tight all the way to the very end. We're not going to take too long, uh, but you're going to get a very, very special offer. And you're going to learn more about Nourishing Mindfulness, which is our four-week live program that's coming up um, just in the next few days. But we're going to have so much fun there too. So let's just start with meditation. So it, it, you know, there can be, again, so many different ways to look at it, but the simplest way is really just that it's a journey from activity into stillness or silence. That's really all it is. It's a formal way to practice mindfulness, and it's a really fantastic way to de-stress and to balance the body and the mind. So it can also be this beautiful pathway to increase our focus, increase our clarity, and really access some of that inner stillness and that inner peace that's always there. And so in meditation, we're not creating anything. In fact, really, as we get deeper into our meditation, all we're doing is we're peeling off some of the layers of the stress that kind of keep, you know, coming on as life does. And that's when we can tap into that inner stillness and that inner, inner beautiful inner stillness and that silence that we always, always have. And so what's mindfulness, right? Because are they interchangeable? What's the difference? Mindfulness is also an incredibly simple idea. So mindfulness is just the awareness that arises when we are paying attention to this present moment, like actively paying attention to this present moment without judgment, which is the really hard part as we get a little bit older, because we learn to judge everything. This is good. This is bad. This is pretty. That's ugly. This smells good. That, you know, all the things that come um, and with curiosity. So what's funny is if any of you guys are around, are any of you around like three-year-olds, four-year-olds, five-year-olds, even six-year-olds, right? this is describing them, right? Like you're saying, yes, I mean, they are curious. They're paying attention. They're not worried about the conversation they had an hour ago like we do. They're not replaying the past over and over again. They're not trying to predict their future. They're just paying attention. And they're also really not judging anything. They're just curious and they're not judging and they're paying attention. So that to me is one of the main ways I can say that is the true nature of the human being, right? That's how we all were born. And then the stress of being in our lives kind of started to add up. And so again, we're not creating anything with meditation or mindfulness. In fact, we're removing some of the obstacles, some of the things that feel like they keep us stuck when we practice mindfulness. So I hope that makes sense. 
And you guys ask me questions in the chat um, and I'd be happy to answer them. And when we are paying attention it from a neutral standpoint, which by the way is fairly challenging, right? We get to make more conscious choices and that's and we can start to change the course of our lives. We can start to change the course of our days. There can be so many different powerful ways um, that we can do this. So why are we talking about this, right? Uh, why, why? Is life going swimmingly well for all of us and fantastically well for the rest of the world? Probably not. Not, right. And so what we know is even before COVID, there was a absolute epidemic of chronic stress, of chronic infl inflammation. And there is a very much imbalance in our lifestyles for the most part. Right. And so what ends up happening is when there's too much of the sympathetic go, 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 what can happen is we can start to have a whole slew of inflammatory illnesses that are chronic. So heart disease, diabetes, GI disturbances, all of those things start to show up. And certainly it also plays true within mental and emotional wellness and illness as well. And COVID really piled some of that stuff on, right? And so because there is this imbalance, it brings on a mindset of scarcity, whether it's with time. In fact, I would say most of the time when I'm working with anyone, and I feel this as well. So it's not like I'm some floating high above. In fact, I practice all of these things because I feel like I have an imbalance a lot of times. And so it's it's so much about, you know, like Shelly's story, that's really very much my story too. I had a problem I had to solve and I was really burned out and I was feeling all of these things including um, insomnia, including GI issues, including difficulty with just not understanding how to deal with stress. And so my, you know, my kind of foray and dive into meditation and mindfulness were hundred percent because I needed to solve the problem for myself. And so one of the reasons I teach and I joke about this, but it's not that funny is that if I claim that I'm a meditation teacher, I better meditate every day. And so it keeps me honest. And so it's one of the things um, that, you know, we're just kind of swimming through this life and we're trying to figure out how can we flow a little bit more? How can there be a little bit more balance in our lives, right? And that was that that was stressing me out. So we'll go into what we can do for balance, right? So meditation is this beautiful antidote to this chronic stress, to this chronic sympathetic go, go, go response that we've had. Because what happens is even in a first time meditator, even in a completely, you know, it doesn't really matter if you just show up and you meditate, what can happen is within just the first five minutes, we start to see the parasympathetic rest and restore response come on. So that means the heart rate goes down. I mean, I've done so many meditation workshop, workshops, breath work workshops in, in, in folks with all kinds of different chronic illnesses. And it's uh, like amazing and stunning to, to just hear them be like, oh my God, my heart rate. And even just today, I, you know, I got like a little Fitbit thing that was like, oh my gosh, look at my heart rate. I've been meditating every day. Look at my resting heart rate. It's like, <laughs> you know, she's like, you should measure this stuff. I'm like, I know, I know, but you know, but you can see how you don't really have to try to make anything happen. It's more about just letting go a little bit. It's a little bit about surrendering, if you will. What we see pretty quickly within just about three or four weeks, uh, people report significantly decreased levels of anxiety, decreased levels of overwhelm, decreased levels of depression, all kind of the opposite of that other slide, right? And then when we start to measure hormones, what's really fascinating is um, the level of cortisol, of adrenaline, those stress hormones, um, they, they begin to decrease very, very quickly. And that really relates to the decreased inflammation that we start to see with in, in folks who meditate you know, pretty consistently. And of course, physical health is significantly improved as well, right? So um, when we're in that go, go, go stress response, you can imagine that the body really shunts blood away from things like the immune system, from the digestive system, from the different parts of our brain. And so when we start to bring balance, the body automatically understands how to bring that healing on. And so it's really, really fascinating. So 
what else happens, right? What's really cool is what happens in the brain, uh, both during meditation and outside of meditation. It's one of the coolest things ever. And I'm just going to touch kind of briefly on this stuff, right? So what can happen when we're in that stress response is we tend, not always, but we tend to have a lot of blood flow within the limbic system or the midbrain. That's kind of our reptilian sort of brain where we have to survive, right? So that's where the amygdala, the hypothalamus and all of that is. And that does help us, you know, figure out if we're going to live or die. But instead of, you know, facing a saber-toothed tiger, most of the time it's an email we're looking at, or maybe we're stuck in traffic, or it's something that's not actually threatening our lives. And yet the body and the brain are acting like it might. And so when we begin to meditate, even just again, the first few minutes, blood flow begins to change in the, in the actual brain itself. And so what's really cool is there's more blood flow right away in the prefrontal cortex. That's really where the higher centers uh, are there. That's really where we're making these really creative decisions. That's where we're coming up with solutions for problems that we couldn't think of before. So it gives us the ability to be more focused. It gives us this increased sense of calm, a sense of flow, and that's where we can actually have access to that evolution that we're really looking for, that expansion that we're looking for. When we change our mind, that's when everything changes, right? And so this is a really great way to do that. Um, we notice less, I already mentioned, less reactive, less overwhelm. And one of the main types of meditation that I teach, and Shelly and I were number one fans, is just yoga nidra, which is also sometimes called NSDR or non-sleep deep rest. Um, and it in incredible, incredible studies, it literally reprograms the brain every single meditation. You're reprogramming the brain every single meditation. And so that's really a beautiful way to reach more calm. And so that's what's up about meditation. Now, um, we could talk about meditation some more, or I feel like we should, we should actually meditate, right? Because we... <laughs> <laughs> just instead of talking to you about it, right? So um, uh, let's go ahead and do that. Y'all ready to meditate? Type in the chat or raise your hand or, all right, cool. You don't have to know how to meditate. You don't have to, there's really no expectations, right? So um, we're just gonna have a lot of fun. So let's just go ahead and just get into a really comfortable seated position for yourselves. And... Sit up in a tall, dignified position if you can, with some back support, if you're able to have your feet flat on the ground. And very gently close your eyes. And let's begin by just taking a few deep breaths. And just with each exhalation, just letting go of anything that's no longer serving you. Maybe even with a big sigh. A few more gentle, slow breaths. Noticing if you can Drop the shoulders a bit more. Seeing if you can soften the jaw just a tad. Softening the eyes. Just very gently bringing your awareness to your breath. without the need to change it in any way. Just simply noticing the breath. Just when your mind has wandered, you've done nothing wrong. Just gently return back to the breath. Gently noticing how shifting our focus from the external to 
the internal, just conserving our energy. Gently and intentionally focusing our energy on that which supports our well being, supports our purpose. Meditation allows us to draw our awareness inward. Still with your eyes closed, I'd like for you to start repeating a simple mantra or mantra. And that mantra is so hum, so on the in breath, hum on the out breath, just silently repeating. So, hum, so, hum. Just effortlessly repeating the mantra. Gently returning back to the mantra each time your mind has wandered. There's no forcing, no effort. Still keeping the eyes closed, just gently release the mantra and rest. Just rest in being. I want you to silently repeat these four intentions for living a happy, healthy, harmonious life as I say them. Just silently drop them into your being. Joyful, energetic, healthy body. Loving, compassionate, open heart. Reflective, alert, peaceful mind. Lightness of being. Now let's take a few deeper breaths together. Noticing the breath once again as your anchor. It's always here in this present moment. bringing in a deep sense of contentment, of gratitude, 
with you. Gratitude for yourself for creating this space in your busy life. And if you feel called to, you can bring your palms together at the level of your heart, bowing to yourself, bowing to others. Just when you're ready, you can gently open your eyes. Namaste, everyone. And namaste means the divine light in me sees and honors the divine light in you. So that was really fun. Did you guys enjoy that? Anybody fall asleep? No one fell asleep. Okay. Very cool. Okay. So I want to tell you about nourishing mindfulness because really Shelly and I, you know, we um, gave you just this tiny little snippet of what's inside this gorgeous program that we've put together. We've spent a really long time putting this program together. It's really a beautiful combination of herbalism and meditation. And this is meant to be a fully immersive experience for a whole entire month. We are going to have weekly live sessions. We are going to talk about how we can heal and nurture our mind, body, and spirit. There's going to be a lot of ways that we can bring in more balance into our lives. we of course, already have a whole host of gorgeous, amazing women already inside who have already registered. And the seats, of course, are limited, but you are going to have fabulous community support. I mean, fabulous community support. Because um, I think, you know, Shelly and I, we've been doing group programs for so long now. We know the power of women connecting with other women. Um, one of the main things that people talk about when they work with me, when they work with Shelly, is they get to cultivate this inner peace, this inner knowing, this kind of center and we really, you just learned so much about lemon bomb. Imagine all the other things that we're going to talk about in there. Right. And she didn't even get to have time to talk about nutrition. <laughs> so there's like, and I didn't even get time to do a nidra. I didn't get time. You know what I mean? So yeah, for sure. Um, and so what's in there? What's in there? Because this is one of the first questions that I'll get, right? So we get those four weekly live sessions with both of us. They're all recorded because I know some of you are already messaged me and you said, hey, I can't make certain ones of those. It's no problem. Um, they're meant to be so that you can watch them at any time. You can watch them at whatever speed you want to, uh, but you are going to get immediately as soon as you register a full on-demand library with immediate access to these gorgeous recipes that Shelly has put together, these gorgeous videos that she's put together, these videos of teaching that I've put together, as well as micro meditations that are all evidence-based, as well as the longer yoga nidras or NSDR that is so incredibly healing for the mind, body, and spirit. And so, you know, in, it's really the community that I think is gonna make this amazing, gorgeous program even more, even more gorgeous. So what else is in there? Um, Cause there's more, like there's even more in there. Um, so when you look at, uh, when you look at what we're putting together, it's really, really unique in that it is not like, you know, originally we were like, let's just do pre-recorded library. People can access at any time and that's okay. But what we started to learn when we were working with our own groups is actually, I prefer to have some interaction. I prefer to have some time with other people kind of reflecting what we're learning. I usually have, you know, I usually can't think of a question and somebody asks it. And I'm like, oh yeah, I didn't know that either. So there are ways that we learn from each other that are really, really incredible. And so that's what we're giving to you here in this particular program. And that support is really amazing. If you're a physician, if you are in healthcare and you need to earn CME credits, or you'd like to use this for CME credits, I can offer you as a physician, I can offer you CMA, CME credits. So you can come talk to me about that for sure. When we looked at every single thing and I added this up, I put it on our website um, and it was amazing. Like, oh my gosh, this is, a huge high value that we want to deliver to, to people. Um, it really, it was easily, I think we could have priced it really out there, but we wanted to keep this a place where anybody that wanted to dip their toes in and get the real deal experience without having to commit to a six month period of time or a huge, you know, price tag, that's really what we were trying to go for. So right now it's not at 159 right now, it's actually at 129. And that 
that will go up it, by this weekend, it'll move up to 159. And then of course, registration will close as soon as we hit um, our number of women, because we do want to keep it small. Um, but here, actually, I will, uh, let me see if I can type it in here. Shelly, do you want to type it in the chat, the um, registration? Yes, and sorry, I had that handy a minute ago. Yeah, I was going to do that, but like I'm having a hard time with the screen share. So I'm looking right. to see. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, perfect. So you guys, thank you so much for being here. Your time is your one non-renewable resource and Shelly and I know that. So hopefully we've given you a high value for your time today and hopefully you're taking away a lot from this. And so that's that's absolutely something that we understand as well. And so um, we know that we can give you way more bang for your buck the earlier you register, meaning you'll immediately start having access to the recipes and to the the meditations themselves. So you'll have like a whole 10 days extra to start meditating and start practicing some of these things. And what Shelly has said she's going to do, this was something Shelly came up with. She will literally ship you a very incredible, special organic lemon balm tea to your door with her handwriting. She might even have her kids do this. We don't know, but it's got to be in the next 24 hours. If you register in the next 24 hours, this is what Shelly is going to give you guys. And that is incredible to me. Um, and that's, you know, hopefully this is like, I'm like, oh, Shelly, this is an offer that like, like nobody can refuse this offer. Come on now. And so, you know, I like to, I like to come up with this each time um, because I continue to register. I'm registered for like three more learning things with other people, right? Like, cause, and that's what Shelly just talked about too. Like, this is just a way of being for us. Right. And so, and it doesn't, you know, it doesn't mean we don't, you know, that we don't listen to podcasts or read. Of course we can do all those things. Can you read a book about lemon balm? Probably, but do you get the same as what Shelly just gave you? No way. Right. And so she's got all this experience, all these stories, same thing about meditation, right? Can you, can you get an app? Yeah, absolutely. Almost everyone that comes to work with me has already tried an app. And so what we know for sure is this, if you want to go fast, go alone. But if you want to go far, go together. And, you know, we as human beings, our brains, I mean, we're herd species. So our brains are really designed to learn from other people. And that's why we want to put this together for you. And over the years, we've really learned so many different things um, that we can share with you and we can help you and we can kind of pick you up and perhaps you can help one of us too. And that's what's so beautiful about a community program like this. So um, I would love to answer any questions. I'm looking here at the chat. There was one from Janine. Let me see if I can catch it for you. Yeah. Um, she wanted to know how long you should meditate each day. That's a great question. Um, Janine, tell me what you mean by that. Like just for inner peace or what's what just for health, right? Yeah. For health. Yeah. Yeah. So there isn't really like a set time. So, so what I would say is this, like you get a different answer from every single person that you talk to. Right. And so when I'm working with someone and they're really just starting off with meditation or have struggled with it, what I really have them start to do. Yeah. Like me too. I mean, it doesn't come naturally any of us, right. It just doesn't. And so, I mean, it could, if we cultivated it from, you know, age nine, but that's just not how life works. So really I honestly, honestly start people at five minutes a day, because what we want is the consistency rather than the intensity. And so when, when we get started, whether it's with a month or meditation or even just a short, that's why I have so many of those micro meditations in there. And they're really cool because they access different parts of your brain. And so we really literally just start with five minutes a day. And then over time, when you build that up, then that's really where the bang for your buck is. But if I were to say to you, I want you to meditate 30 minutes a day, you'd be like, no way, I don't have that. But if I said, can you have, do you have, you know what? I've actually literally started with two minutes a day. Um, you know, a busy physician mom, four young kids, uh, surgeon, I mean, like, you know, all these different um, things come into play and our brain immediately, like the amygdala shuts, you know, it like goes off on the alarm system. If you're like, yeah, I can't do this for 30 minutes a day. Don't worry about it. Why don't we just start? And, and that's really every time you meditate, you're rewiring the brain. Right. And then a lot of times we even start with just mindful walks. Like, you know, let's 
let's literally remove the electronics and just look outside, listen for what's there. Is it traffic? Is it the birds? How do your feet feel when you're walking on the grass? How does your feet, you know, how does it feel? So, so many different ways that we can really start to work with it so that we can begin to train the mind, right? So it's really not about controlling the mind. It's really about training the mind. And for all of those reasons, whether it's for sleep or focus or productivity or relationships, all of those things start to improve as well. So it's a whole host of of balance that, that meditation can bring for us. Does that answer your question? Yeah. Uh, it was long, by the way. I talk a lot. And that's good. That was good. That was good. I'll start with five. I think five I can is all you need. That. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Especially if you can figure out how to do this, you know, and I recommend in the morning. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, Look at some of your micro ones. Yeah. That sounds yeah. good. Yeah. Yeah. Dr. Taylor, you're, you're healing from trauma. Yeah. And MS. And so you'd like to spend an hour or more. Absolutely. Yeah. And I see, yeah, you'd love to do it, but does it happen? No, but sometimes it can, and that's incredible. Right. So I love that. I love these stories. Thank you for sharing that. That's really beautiful. Anyone else have stories or anything to share or questions? These are right, for those of you who haven't heard me say this before, I have been, since I started like studying with you and not just doing the app, like I have been doing apps and all the fun things. I've been amazed at how, when I, when I'm very intentional about making space for that meditation. And I think I have so much to do, especially on those days where I'm like, I, my, my brain is up and running before I'm even out of the bed. Um, and if I sit, if I will, will, will pull myself in and make time to do that meditation, I really can get so much more done. I'm, I'm always, it, it's, it sounds a little woo woo and all this stuff can be a little woo woo, but it really does. It really does help me center and study and just carve through things in ways that I need to, like that I, that, that it's that kind of, that kind of focus that I've been searching for, for so long. So yeah, science does support the woo woo for sure. <laughs> I know. And of, like we have all of this, like we need it, right? Thousands of years of practice should probably be more important than a, a 20 week study, but, but we need it in our funny little brains now. So. Absolutely. Yeah. I wholeheartedly agree. And uh, the, the amount of things that I've learned from Shelly, just on the intelligence of herbs, the intelligence of nutrition and how we can use that um, and in a very, it, it's really a spiritual way, right? Like that's why we call this balancing mind, body, and spirit, not for any religious reasons whatsoever, but spiritually in that, that connection to something higher than ourselves, that connection to each other, that, that, that just that intricate connection that we all have to each other and to the food and the nourishment that we're taking in. And so we really don't skimp on that. We we're not too shy about talking about that at all. Um, and so I would say we're right at that intersection of science and spirituality. And so we've both um, studied huge, heavy doses of science. I consider myself to be a scientist, but I also understand there's deeper meaning behind a lot of these things and deeper things that we can really reach into when we're looking for that. So yeah. thank you so much for coming. We are so grateful that you took this time with us tonight. We know that uh, it's valuable. And so we are super, super grateful. Keep an eye out for that replay. Yes. Uh, 